Hello and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is Christina and I lead the onboarding team here at Property Me. We are joined by Peter, our support team leader. Hey, Peter. Hey, everyone. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. And today we are going to have a look at our brand new feature, Arrears Automation. This is now my new favorite pro feature. What about you, Peter? Yep, 100% hands down. Awesome. We are going to also have a refresher on our message templates, which really tie in with the theme as well. And of course, we'll be answering your Facebook questions as well. So please comment below. Yes, comment so, below. Let us know what you think. Let's just jump straight in and take a look at our brand new pro feature, Arrears Automation. So there you have it guys, our very first feature that forms part of our automation studio. Now, before I jump in and show you how to set it up and how it works, we've got a very special guest speaker today. Sarah Dawson, who is the Chief Revenue Officer here at Property Me, has joined us. Welcome, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Good, good. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so firstly, what do you love most about the automation studio? I love, there's so much to love about Automation Studio. Um, I think that, you know, when I look at this feature, I think about Automation Studio as a framework for the future for property managers. Uh, when we look at the development of uh, any feature, we look at saving a property manager time, making sure it's simple to use, and Automation Studio does all of those things. I think that um, property managers today have also moved very much from managing property to managing relationships and Automation Studio gives property managers the opportunity to do just that. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. They're not just yeah. managing properties, they're managing people That's as it. well. Yeah. What about, so Sarah, this is a pro feature, but it's not the only benefit of being on pro. What else can clients expect if they're on our pro plan? Yeah, so uh, there's a long list of pro features now, uh, which is fantastic. And I think that, you know, when uh, we're looking, when we're talking to businesses all around the country or across Australia and New Zealand, we're always identifying with them what they need to be able to provide the best service for their customers. And when you look at the pro features, I think that also it's important to have a look at how much time they're all saving you. Uh, because you've got listings, mm. we have uh, database and dashboard insights, mm. um, of course, now automation studio as well. But each one of those functions really gives the opportunity for property managers to go and focus on things that are dollar productive. So yeah. focus on things like growing the business, building relationships. And so this, for a small investment, in fact, I, it works out to be uh, 25 cents per property per month. You can definitely uh, gain a lot of um, insight and opportunity to build your business by implementing pro features yeah so sarah as someone that's been in the industry for i don't even know if you want me to say how many decades <laughs> we've been in, it's a couple of decades what do you and think a little, that, and a little bit more but we're, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll round it down that's uh, it. what do you think that the automation studio means for property management as a whole yeah, um, look, the conversation, like I said, I think has definitely changed in that time. I remember, uh, I can show my age in remembering the DOS-based uh, days mm -hmm. of using using software and floppy disks and all of those things. But um, one thing that I really sticks out to me in my conversations over those, those 20 plus years was that there was always, uh, we were always looking for technology that would change the way that we ran businesses and property management. And, and there were a lot of mundane tasks in property management. So what I mean by that is not just um, that they're repetitive tasks. Yeah. So tasks that they, we come in each day and we look at our list and, and everything was very driven by the person behind the computer. So coming in and making sure that everything was run by the property manager. And I think where we've ended up today, which is fantastic, and another reason why I'm so excited about this feature is that now we're in a place where technology can do that for you. Yep. And you, the computer can actually set up, be set up in the background to 
uh, run those processes for you and then just provide you with a dashboard of exemption. So it means that your list of perhaps 50 tasks or 100 tasks can actually be cut down to a very small um, version of that that you would just need to action off your own back. Yeah, and it gives you time to focus on the more important things as well exactly. instead of spending yeah. half a day on those mundane, repetitive tasks. Yeah, and it and challenges a property manager too, I think, to step out of the box and think about their role a little bit more like account management, you know, and really managing mm. that whole portfolio, the relationships, the conversations, you know, new business, really getting out there and, and networking and allowing uh, our computers and our machines to be able to to do their part in assisting and could almost be considered a property management assistant and, and perhaps be able to manage more properties under your uh, portfolio, but it could be scary. Yeah. <laughs> so Sarah, Arrears Automation is the very first automation that's part of the Automation Studio. Can you tell everyone uh, about the other automations that are in the works? Give them a little bit of a sneak peek. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I like the term framework for the future for, for Automation Studio because it definitely is that. And um, I, I guess today when you're when the all of our, um, our audience are looking at this feature, I challenge them also to think about what else could be possible in the future. Um, we've looked at the tasks that are, um, that are relevant and that are consistent for property managers. And so we're excited to say that Automation Studio is launched with arrears and then we'll uh, further include jobs and uh, inspections. So that will be coming up um, shortly. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Sarah. That's Thanks, awesome. Sarah. We'll have you back thank anytime. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So um, everyone, just before I get started, I just want to let you know, just to read that it is a pro feature only, the Automation Studio. Um, it's set to be released to all pro users very soon. But if you're really keen and eager and you're on pro and you're also part of our test program, you've got access to jump in and set up and start using the arrears automation straight away. You ready, Christina, to go through? Ready. Perfect. Yep. Jump in. Okay, so let's go. Uh, so over in your settings team, you have a new automation studio tab. So just under, we've got the overview. So this is where all of your automations are going to sit. So as Sarah mentioned, we've got more planned down the track. So as we release more and more automations, this screen will get bigger and bigger and you've got easy access awesome. to jump in and out of each of them. But for today, let's focus our attention on arrears automation. Now, what I thought I would do first is go through and set up all the rules so you can see how easy it is to set up. And then I'll show you the two options that you've got um, to actually trigger and generate your messages. So straight off the bat, the rules are um, anything that you want to do in your office, you can um, complete um, through here. So for me, I like to start sending my messages when tenants are two days in arrears. So we've got if tenants are two days in arrears, and then we can connect or link our message template. So I've got one set nice. for two. And you'll sense a little bit of a theme and how easy this is to set up. So if tenants are three days, you can use that same message template and the same for the fourth one. Now from here, I'm gonna keep adding some more rules, but check this out. When I start adding my fifth day in arrears, I'm gonna start using different message templates. Christina, I'm sure you've seen this when you're setting up clients as well, yeah. that these days, I don't think it's a great idea to send that same message template every single mm. day to your tenants, That's it sort right. of loses a bit of its effect. So yeah. I've got a different message template set up for my five, six, and tenants who last seven days in arrears. Now, what I really love about this uh, feature as well is that you can really take advantage of the message templates. So you can offer that next sort of service level to your landlords and advise them at the same time that their tenants are in rent arrears. Check this out, I'm gonna edit my seven day in arrears rule and I can add my owner message as well. So I've got an owner message template set up that I send out to my landlords when their tenants are seven days in arrears. Are you seeing this as well, Christina? Definitely, yeah. Uh, and it's it's two in one. So it, you know, if they get to that point where it's over seven days and you know that owner wants to know instead of that additional email, that additional mm -hmm. phone call, the automation is going to do its thing and not only notify, remind the tenant to pay the arrears, but let the owner know, hey, the tenant's late in arrears, but don't worry, we're onto it and we'll keep you posted. I love yeah. that. 
So another cool thing that I really like as well is that you can attach your form messages to these rules as well. So if you've got a Forms Live or a RealWorks account, now I know you Queenslanders are going to love this one. I've got my Form 11 Remedy Breach message template all set to go. That includes nice. that form. So when your tenants are eight days in arrears, they will get their message template that includes uh, that mm -hmm. Remedy to Breach notice. What do you think, Christina? I think I can add maybe a 10 the day. Setup is really super simple. I mean, you can use your current workflow with this and customize this with how you do it. So if you're an office that chases from two to 10 days and then everything after 10 is a phone call, you could do that for this. If mm -hmm. um, you do every day, I mean, this is totally customizable in that way. So the arrears automation is not just about rent arrears either. You can also add invoice messages. So check this out. If I personally, I like to send out my uh, invoice arrears messages when they hit 30 days. So I've got a 30 day invoice arrears message template nice. all set to go. So it includes both rent arrears plus the yeah. invoice arrears as well. Easy. Uh, I think that looks pretty good, Chris. I don't think I've missed pretty anything. Good. That's a pretty good schedule. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to save that. So now that we've got all those rules set up, now I'm going to show you the two different options you've got when it comes to actually triggering or generating the automation. So the first one that we've got is the flexible option. So the flexible option is for officers out there that want to be in control of exactly when you're generating your arrears messages. So imagine that the trust accountant has done all the receiving for the day. Now, one person has to jump into your arrears automation screen, tick that box and hit the process button. And now all of the arrears messages are generating by themselves. Awesome. So it's pretty simple. So I've set up a couple of offices and I've shown them this way, which they think is cool. But the scheduled one is the one that I think people are really going to enjoy. Going to take an opp opportunity of that automation. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. Slow. Oops. Just looks like it's stuck on me. We're all still working from home, guys. Yes. And my <laughs> Excuse internet... the delays. <laughs> <laughs> my internet connection is not very stable at the moment. So, Christina, why don't I throw to you for a second? Do you want to show mm -hmm. everyone? Um, so, when you're generating your arrears automations, um, mm. Sometimes you might come across owners that don't want you to send messages to their tenants. Yeah. It might be the owner's friend, uh, sister, something like that. Yeah, for sure. I see how many tickets are coming through with, um, you know, COVID deferral payments and special payment plans and things like that. So, of course, if you use the automation, um, there are going to be times where you want to exclude a certain uh, tenant or however many from this uh, from this feature. So let's say, I'll use an example. Uh, if we jump into our tenant, Renee, let's say that Renee has entered into a payment plan with um, the owner, and it's gonna take her quite some time to pay off the arrears. So I can actually jump into her folio and exclude her from the audit from receiving any arrears messages. So there's a new little section in the folio to exclude from arrears automation. In this case, I'm going to select yes. And that way, Renee will not receive any messages at all. So you guys will also love the brand new view in the in the arrears tab as well. Um, I personally love it. Um, so if we jump into our new look arrears tab. Peter, all of your tenants are in arrears. So you definitely <laughs> need this feature more than anyone. Um, you guys are going to notice that we have a couple of new views. The first one is our effective pay to date. Um, I know you've been asking for that one. So we've just made it really easy to see from this view. Um, we've also got a, a view to see who's got the automated messaging turned on. And my personal favourite, we've got um, a view to show us who has moved out as well. Along with these new uh, columns, we do have additional filters. So if I needed to filter out and see who, who has automated arrears turned off, 
I can simply do that. And my tenant Renee should come up. So from time to time, if I need to create a view and still send out bulk messages or just see where they're up to with their arrears, I can still go via this traditional arrears tab. Um, I think you guys will love it. Please let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, do we have any questions so far? Um, I think there's some Facebook questions coming in, but if you want to throw the screen back to me, I'm ready to Got show it. you. Nice. I'm ready to show you the scheduled option. So back on with me, um, I'm going to take you back through to where we set up all of those rules earlier and we were on the flexible option. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to flick it across and I'm going to make it scheduled. So from here, I need to tell Property Me on what days I want the automations to generate. So I'm a little bit of a stickler for arrears. So I do Monday. You're not, Friday. we just saw that you weren't. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do Monday through Friday. And for me, my office, we generally have the receding done by, say, midday. So to be safe, I'm going to have my messages start triggering from two o'clock in the afternoon. One thing that I'm a massive advocate for is this skip processing automation unless one receipt is recorded for the day. So I see it as a little bit of a safety net. So if the mm, person that definitely. does, yeah, you're receiving every day, if they're off sick or they're running late or for whatever reason, the receiving's not done for the day, I want to have that one ticked because if the receipt's not done, I don't want to send out my messages. I would not want to have a conversation with tenants telling them that they're in arrears when they actually are not <laughs> in arrears. I love that. So from there, I'm going to save that. And now we can see that the automation tile has moved from the flexible option down to scheduled. And now Monday through Friday from two o'clock every day, those messages are automatically going to start generating and triggering awesome. all by themselves. It's really set and forget, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. That's what I've been telling people as well. Yeah. Set and forget. And, you know, you might still have to make some phone calls to, to tenants when they get 15 days plus in arrears. But the um, the admin side, the yeah, the admin, admin side, side totally looked side, after. all done yeah. for you. Nice, cool. Uh, Christina, can you see any Facebook? Let me have a look. So, what do you guys think? Let us know. Yeah, I'm gonna save that. What we might Bear do from. Us. Here, Christina is. Mm -hmm. I might stay on my screen because I get um, asked a lot from clients how do I switch from the core subscription across to Pro? So, again, this uh, feature is available to Pro subscribers. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to upgrade. Again, I'm still in my settings, so I head across to subscription. Actually, let me jump back into my actual portfolio. So from here, subscription settings, and I'm able to modify. And from here, I'm able to switch between our core and pro plans. So both plans currently include all of the core features, but check out how much more you get for being on pro with the addition of this automation studio. And I think Sarah mentioned it just before that, you know, on core, it's roughly about $1.10 per mm. property per month. Whereas on pro, it's $1.25 per property per 25 month. 25 cents, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. when you're getting things like the ability to upload your properties to um, mm -hmm. your listing portals like domainandrealestate.com, bank yeah. feeds, um, automation studio. You really do get much more value for money if you're on the pro plan. Yeah, no, I love that. We have actually had a couple of questions come through before we get into, as I said, we want to do a bit of a template refresher because you can now see how much templates really play into this piece. Um, thank you for everyone that's um, actually jumped in and given us some comments. There's one, Peter, that's asked, um, how do the SMSs uh, play into this feature? Perfect. That is a great question. Um, the cool thing about the Automation Studio is that um, all of the rules that you set, the message templates still abide by the same rules that you've got when you set them up. So if you've got um, a message template that will send out an email, a printed doc, and also an SMS, when the automation is run, the same thing is going to happen. So the SMS will trigger, there'll be a printed letter for you to print off and post, and the email will trigger as well. So if you nice. don't want that, you again, you can jump in and you can start editing and changing up 
um, your message templates. Same thing goes for um, some of the clients that I've set up. Um, they're used to their message templates going to their outbox, so they're set mm -hmm. to hold. Whereas now with the automation, they've jumped in, taken that hold off. So as soon as the automation is generated, those messages just go straight out. You don't need to worry about it at all. Yeah, yeah. There's um, there's another question here. Let's have a look. Give me a sec, guys. Oh, yeah, we did have Natalie that asked if your arrears templates are set to review before you send them with the automation override. So we've just answered that one. Mm -hmm. Jump in and check out your message templates and you can pick either have them on hold so they go to the outbox mm. for you guys to send off or take it off and they will go out straight away by themselves. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Um, let's have a look. Actually, I might give you guys a bit of a demo with how we jump into the message templates and edit them. So uh, along with this feature, we have actually um, created a couple more that you can use. They are currently sitting in your inactive um, message templates. So I'm going to jump in and show you what I would do um, for a bit of a template uh, health check uh, and to review the, the new ones that we have for you guys. So let's jump into our settings, messages and templates. So here are the new ones that we have. We have um, got six all together, uh, including four tenant ones, uh, the, an example of one that you would send to an owner, which Peter demoed earlier. And we've also got an arrears reminder too. So let's say I've had a read through and I'm pretty happy with them. I just want to tweak them a little bit. The first thing that I need to do to make any changes to our system lock templates is create a clone. And then from there, we can edit the clone. So I might just start with my little gentle reminder. So in order to make any tweaks, I clone it. I now have a copy option. So I'm going to open that one up and make some changes. So the first thing that I'll do is let me activate it. I will rename it though. So this one, I just want to call arrears, say two to three days, for example. The other thing I want to do is if I'm taking advantage of the automation, I don't want to go into my outbox. I just want, as soon as this automation triggers, I want the message to go out to the tenant. So I'm actually going to take the hold option off. So the message sends automatically when the trigger happens. So, uh let's from here you can notice now that i'm able to edit the text so i might add something in here like a pay to date so i might put you are paid to and include my little merge field for say the effective date so the tenant can see this is their pay to date but they're in arrears of this amount so I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, you can tweak it or reword the whole thing. Just um, uh, do a little preview of the of the uh, merge fields when you're ready. So from here, if I save that, it's pretty easy. So you're welcome to use the ones we have, but have a read through. This is definitely the time to go through your message templates because they really pay, play such a big role with yeah. this feature. And if you're using the same message template every day, update them, have some different ones yeah. mix it up a little bit. Yeah, we have actually sure. got a good Facebook question that I wanted to address. Phil Langley has asked, so when you exclude Saturday and Sunday, for instance, does the Monday automation pick up those? Yes, it does. So if you have your um, first arrears uh, rule set to three days, say on Friday, the tenant is two days in arrears, it's not going to generate on Saturday and Sunday because you don't have that automation set up. So then on Monday, when the automation is run, that tenant will receive that three day in arrears message. Nice. Cool. Have you seen any other Facebook? There's so We're many. We're getting to go some through really good comments um, with people saying that it's a great feature. Thanks, guys. We think so yeah. too. We really, really hope that you'll take advantage of it. Yeah, we're really proud of it and we're really excited for what's to come as well the automation studio is just going to be so big um mm. and every few months when we're adding to it it's definitely going to be worth that pro that pro price olivia has asked uh we are a pro subscription however unable to see this feature so Ooh, if you I'll want to them. jump in and take a look oh peter may as well jump uh, in and show us i'll show them okay 
So if you're on Pro and you want access to this feature now, all you need to do is just jump into your settings. I've been in the settings quite a bit today. And if you scroll down to the bottom, see how it's got join the test program. If you want to be a part of the test program to have access to this, just flick it to yes and then hit save. Then if nice. you just do a screen refresh yet, you should be all good and you can jump in and set it all up. Yeah, beautiful. Cool, cool. Well, Christina, do you have um, some top tips that you want to finish us all up on today? I do. I've got a couple of tips for us of where to start. Uh, the first one being jump on pro. Uh, <laughs> so if you're not already a pro user, jump on pro, click on to join the test program so you have access to this amazing feature. Well, Christina, um, another... don't even jump mm. on pro. Jump on pro for a week. See how it goes. It's pro rata. It's only can, charged. You can trial it for sure. You you're can only trial charged it. for the days that you're on it. So jump on, try it for a week, and then if you find it's not for you, just switch back off. That's a good tip, guys. A great tip. Um, my next tip would be to customise your message template. So um, this is a perfect opportunity to have a look through edit, um, tweak, add, remove. Um, setting up the rules is only really going to take you a few minutes. You know, the, the hard bit is looking at what you have. You know, perhaps your PMs have gone a bit rogue and have their own and you, whatever. So this is really the time to have a look at the process, the wording, the merge fields and, um, you know, really revisit that in that yeah. case. Um, I think the owner messaging is great. In the last office that I worked in, there was a, a rule that in day number 10, it would have to, I must contact the owner to, to let them know. Um, this would take that job away completely. So one, it's really transparent with the owner and two, it's done for you automatically as you're already chasing up the tenant in that way. Owners are relying on that money sometimes to pay their mortgages. Totally. And yeah, yep. they need to be able to work everything out. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, and my last tip would be we have a stack of brand new KB articles and some tutorials. So um, it's a great opportunity to jump in with the team, um, maybe in your next PM meeting, um, you know, huddle around the table or whatever you guys are doing and, and go through and get some information. Um, so stay tuned for um, those those new articles. And the easiest way to access those, Christina, is um, everyone would find, because we released this last night, when you signed in mm. this morning, that green you banner. You should have your runs, little banner uh -huh. up the top. Yeah. yeah. Click yeah. on the link and it'll take you straight through to all the information that you need to know. And we've got even more links towards the bottom that will, yeah, that will navigate you through the knowledge base. Totally. They are my four top tips. Um, we hope that you guys love this feature as much as we do. Can we end with a few more questions? How are we going, Peter? Look, not so many questions, but a lot of love. Lots of really love. good comments. <laughs> Sophie Reed has asked, um, does this do invoice arrears as well? Yes. So when you're setting up your rules, you can either have them applied to uh, rent arrears or invoice arrears. So just make sure you've got um, an appropriate invoice message template set up and good to go that you can attach to those rules. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's a wrap, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Please continue commenting away and we'll um, we'll jump in later today and answer any of the questions that we've missed. But we really hope you enjoy the direction that we're going in with this automation studio Definitely. and have fun with the automated arrears. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Peter. Bye.